So we knew the area was fertile, uh, but we had, no, we had no idea that we would hit something like we've hit with bacon. Hello and welcome to Pear Dirt TV, I'm Dominic Piper. Today I'm joined by Ed Ainscott, Managing Director of London Metals. Ed, thanks for coming in. My pleasure, Dominic. Thanks for having us. Ed, great start to 2022 for the yep. company. Some uh, big, high-grade, wide intercepts at your Cambalda nickel project. You mm. must be delighted with the start. Yeah, we are. We are. We're pinching ourselves, Dominic, to be honest. Uh, Baker, we're, we're hitting uh, high, high-grade, very high-grade, very thick uh, intercepts of nickel. Uh, very close to surface, only 100 to 120 metres down to the top of the nickel mineralisation. Uh, and in some respects most exciting, it's actually quite close to an old gold open pit uh, called West Ida, which is about 350 metres away. So we're pinching ourselves that we've made a discovery. Uh, obviously this ground's pretty well trodden and uh, you kind of go into this process thinking wouldn't it be nice to make a discovery. Uh, and we've made one. And uh, you know when you get into the detail it's just remarkable. WMC had drilled this area so the drill holes were about 100 to 150 metres apart. Uh, they'd hit some low grade, uh, narrow widths, pretty modest grade. But we had an exploration target in our prospectus covering this area. And I think it was about half a million tonnes between half and one and a half percent nickel, somewhere around that. So we knew the area was fertile, uh, but we had, no, we had no idea that we would hit something like we've hit with Baker. And uh, when you look now and you actually remove everything we've done in the last three or four months and just look back at where it sat relative to WMC drilling, it literally could not have been in any other orientation and WMC not have clipped it in their original drilling. And obviously if they'd hit, if they'd hit what we'd hit, they would have drilled it out and they probably would have mined it 50, 60 years ago. So, yeah, that's quite sobering but obviously hugely exciting, without a doubt. Uh, you, you said WMC, and, and obviously uh, it's been nearly 20 years since that, that company uh, left, left yep. that area of Cambalda. Yep. You, you only listed in, in June last year, so mm -hmm. what's been happening in the, in the 20 odd years since? Why, why, is this, why are these holes that you're drilling never been drilled in that yeah. time? Yeah, good point. Well, look, the, the key, I guess, the key uh, value proposition that London presents is that the assets that we now hold got sold with the gold. That's kind of the easiest way to describe it. So back in 2000, 2001, when WMC was exiting the region, selling its nickel mines to the likes of Mincor, Independence, Panoramic, it also sold its gold assets to uh, gold fields of South Africa. And I know I was actually working for WMC, and uh, we got transferred with the furniture to gold fields. So I moved from being chief geologist for St Ives, WMC, to chief geologist for gold fields. So it was, you know, got deep history on that process. But because Goldfields has spent a lot of money, it was close to half a billion dollars back in 2001, so a lot of money to buy St Ives and Agnew, they just didn't want other people traipsing over the ground doing nickel exploration. So WMC originally wanted to keep the nickel rights to our ground and all the other ground that they weren't selling to the small junior nickel companies. Uh, and Goldfield said, no, no, no. It got converted from a right to an option, and they've still got an option on our offtake for our ore. Uh, but essentially, because of that, the, the assets lay fallow. So nothing really got done. It was a little bit done by Reliance, who had an option over it from the Beta Hunt uh, transaction they did, which I did with them, actually, I did that deal with Paul Chapman. And, uh, but really, since then, until we had a private joint venture with Goldfields in 20, late 2014, early 2015, not a single thing was done. So they missed that last boom. 2007, 2008, when the nickel price famously went up to 40,000, 50,000 bucks a tonne, nothing was being done. And clearly, in the interim, Mincor, Independence Panoramic, hugely successful buying assets from WMC, uh, assets that were in care and maintenance or were open. Our assets were shut at that time, but they did hugely well and did fabulously well because they're a bit more nimble, uh, more focused on exploration, and of course the nickel price really helped. So uh, our, our value proposition is really we're just trying to re reproduce what they did uh, 20 years ago in, in what we think is now looks like another kind of nickel cycle and another nickel high point. That is a, a perfect time in between uh, you know, making a discovery and, and where nickel is at the moment. But nickel ore bodies are, are particularly tricky uh, to drill out. You know, How many, uh, how many metres have you drilled so far? Are we expect a more uh, assay results from right. that orig initial programme. Yeah, look, we've drilled 19,000 metres since IPO. Uh, that's getting on for over two, well over two thousand, nearly three quarters of what we planned for the whole two years of the two year use of funds. And the, and the reason that we're so far ahead is because we've drilled so much into Baker. And the reason we've drilled so much into Baker is it's so shallow. I mean, you literally, as a geologist, uh, especially with nickel, you're thinking Cambalda, it would be deep six, seven, eight hundred metres down before you found anything. 
to be hitting it 100 metres down. And the beauty of that, we've got Blue Spec drilling out of Kalgoorlie, have been awesome, and uh, they're drilling 300 metres a shift. So every day we're putting three new holes into the discovery. So making the discovery was fabulous. Where it sits in the profile is amazing, and it's just allowed us to really fast track and expedite it. Uh, to the point that we've put 35 odd holes into Baker now, drilled it out on 40 by 40, which is pretty unusual for an explorer that's only been listed five or six months to not only make a discovery but actually be on the verges of putting it into indicate and third resource. So, uh, we've seen recently uh, in the last couple of years companies that you mentioned there, uh, Panoramic, Minkar, even Poseidon now have started making new discoveries mm. and that's sort of had the ability then to drag in other re existing resources into an overall development plan. Does Baker have the potential to, to, be, the, to the, be the springboard to a development scenario for you? Yeah, Dominic, look, we, we listed on 30, with 39,000 nickel tonnes, which, which we generated from all the old WMC drilling, recutting the core, doing the QAQC, putting it into jaw compliant resource. Uh, that's all accessible off the old Foster mine, which is flooded and needs dewatering, but it's kind of capital light to get back in there. The beauty of uh, of the Baker discovery is up until we found it, we were solely focused that we had to pump Foster out, rehab Foster, get back it down into Foster, because that was what was ahead of us. Now that we found Baker, it's, it's massively material to us. So similar to those other companies, you mentioned uh, finding something, whether it's large or modest, it just shifts the goalposts. It just broadens the, you know, takes the blinkers off, and we now realise with Baker, subject to the regulatory steps, which should be straightforward, we're on granted M's. Uh, we realised that we could do it first, we could do it in parallel, uh, that the potential for Baker to go and build the company is enormous. So uh, it's both exciting, but it, it is a game changer for us, without a doubt. We've seen the share price obviously yep. react to that, <laughs> uh, almost a doubling since, the, since we come back from yeah. uh, the Christmas break. Yeah. What's investor reaction been like? Uh, do, do you expect to see any, uh, a lot more support if you're spending this money on drilling? I'd imagine you might have to go back to the market at some point this year. Yeah. of investors backing you for that sort of uh, scenario? Look, I think uh, when you go to the market and you say this area's been underexplored, uh, you can't, in your heart you're hoping, well, <laughs> you, you're confident in your technical analysis, but to then find something sitting within the drill spacing is, is just, it's writ large, you know, our thesis was right, uh, and I think that gives investors great confidence, so I think they're sitting up and taking notice, and the, obviously the wits and the grades help, it's, it's not like we're finding one or two metres at one or two percent, you know, we've had five at seven and, uh, you know, and grades over ten percent, so I think people are sitting up and taking notice, I think they are appreciating that it is material to us in terms of its position, how early it could come on stream, so yeah, it's definitely garnering a, a lot of interest, and, and people are saying, well, what are your plans for the rest of the year, uh, what are you going to do now? Uh, but it's not just Baker, we've, we've had similar success in between the WMC drilling at Warren, uh, which comes off the old Foster mine, where we drilled between WMC holes again, they were a couple of hundred metres apart, and we hit, uh, hit 8.7 metres at 3 odd percent. So the thesis that just because WMC didn't drill it doesn't mean it's not worthy of drilling uh, is, is really holding, holding true. And that's obviously exciting because we've got lots of other areas where there were big gaps in the WMC drilling. Uh, you say investors are asking you what's next, so I may as well ask you yep. what's next. Yep. Can we expect then to see a resource update this year? Are you, will you yep. get far enough to do some development planning? What's the plan? Look, uh, when investors ask those questions, to me, exploration is a process. Discovery is the outcome. So how do you measure success? You can only measure success by putting resources on the book. So we're very focused at rewarding our shareholders by getting that first resource out at Baker. Uh, we're working on it right now. One of the reasons we took a punt before Christmas and drilled it out so aggressively uh, was because it was shallow and we could, uh, but was also so that we could actually put a peg in the sand and say, well, we had 39,000 tonnes and now we've grown it to this. So, yeah, we're working on that now. We probably won't get it done this quarter, but we'll report it early next quarter, hopefully. Uh, we've got some geotech and some met we need to do that kind of feeds into that jaw compliance, but that shouldn't be a problem. Uh, and then, obviously, now we need to turn our minds to both how big could Baker be and we've got consultants working on geophysics to tr try and help us path it down plunge because it appears to be open down plunge. Uh, and one interesting thing about Baker is it's in the hanging wall. So it's in Cambauda terminology, it's called SERP SERP. It sits ultramafic above, ultramafic below. And typically those hanging wall positions normally have uh, a mineralisation, nickel mineralisation on the contact somewhere between the ultramafic and the basalt. So we've got this tantalising prospect that uh, is Baker an orphan or does it have a parent somewhere down on the football contact that could be, uh, could be the next thing we move on to. So that's Baker and then we've, obviously we're trying to draw Warren out, we're trying to get Warren to be big enough to support a restart at Foster. 
uh, and that's going well and we'll be updating the market soon on some of the Warren results. Uh, yeah, and then we've got to turn them on to the other gaps in the program. So yeah, it's, we've got a lot on our plate really and uh, it's a difficult market. We need to staff up, we need to get more bodies on deck to handle these programs. Uh, but it's a Hollywood problem, right? I mean, you, you just can't complain when you're hitting those kind of wits and grades. Certainly not, and uh, particularly at a time when the nickel sector here in, in Western Australia is bubbling away. We've seen, obviously, a number of corporate deals. Mm. Have, you, have you fielded some corporate interest early on Look, from I'm, larger companies? Oh, not for me to say, but uh, it's definitely a Game of Thrones, isn't it? Like, is winter coming? It's not really... Well, I guess if it's winter, you need an electric vehicle so you can <laughs> charge your battery. Yeah, those corporate, uh, that corporate interplay is fascinating. I mean, we're sitting on the sidelines... Uh, we've got Goldfields as a significant shareholder from the IPO transaction where we acquired the other half of the project. Uh, so they've kind of got our back. We've got a very fixed register with the top 20 uh, shareholders own 75%. So it's quite tight, but we're quite liquid. We still generate reasonable volumes in the meantime. Uh, but corporately, we're kind of unfettered corporately. We don't have a name that you would associate with a corporate play on our register, and we're unfettered with our all. And we see that as a real strength because I think all those other players that are looking around and looking at the number of chairs and the music stopping, uh, we're not actually tied to any of them. Uh, I think we can cut our own course and we can keep head down and get on with the business. So we see that as a strength. Ed, thanks very much. It's been fascinating chatting with you and particularly hear about those intercepts that you've seen so far this year. Best of luck for the next uh, set of drilling thanks. results and uh, I'm sure we'll be able to catch up later in the year and hear more about uh, the growth of this Baker discovery. Perfect. Yeah, it's exciting time, Samantha. Thanks for having us.